Hi, I'm Courtney at womenlivingwell.org, home of Good Morning Girls, and we are reading through the Bible cover to cover, just one chapter a day. So this week we began our study in the book of 1 Corinthians. You read chapters 1 through 5, and when I announced out on the blog that we were going to be studying this book of the Bible, one of the first things I said was, this is a difficult book of the Bible to study together because down through the ages, Christians have been divided over many of the issues that we are going to read about in the book of 1 Corinthians. As a matter of fact, Paul wrote the letter to the Corinthian church to try to unite them over these issues. And it seems like our churches just continue to this day to get it together, to be able to follow these things here in Corinthians. So as we go into this, I have to be honest, if we were not reading through the Bible cover to cover, and we've already done about 24 books of the Bible, it might be tempted for me to kind of skirt around this book because it's not an easy one. But let's do this. Let's get into 1 Corinthians and I'm just asking the Lord to help us to understand, to give us clarity and to give us unity because that is his will. So in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10, Paul is speaking. He says, I appeal to you brothers. He doesn't command them. He kind of begs them. He says, I appeal to you brothers by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. He says he wants us to have no divisions. The Greek word there is schismata, and it means to tear or to rip. He says, stop tearing each other apart in the body of Christ within the church. He says there should be no divisions. Instead, be united. That word united means to be knit together, that we should be woven together and not easily, something that's woven together should not be easily torn apart. And so he says, please get along. And then in verse 12, he says, what was causing all the divisions? And he says, what I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? And so what was happening was they were picking different church leaders and following them, and that was causing divisions. And guess what? That same thing is happening right now within the church in this day and age. As a matter of fact, with social media, isn't that the first thing that you do when you find a Bible leader or preacher or teacher that you like? You click the button, follow. And um, as I was preparing to share this um, video with you, I was really convicted by the Holy Spirit. I was like, I got to just be really honest and, and say to you guys that I have not done this well. This has been really hard for me. I have been a part of um, doing this, like out online, trying to figure out who's giving sound doctrine and who isn't and, and that divisiveness that happens. But let me back up and share with you that back when I was in my high school youth group, we had awesome unity and I loved that. And then I went to the Moody Bible Institute and everyone there uh, signs a statement of faith. So essentially we were all on the same page doctrinally and we would have debates like at the dinner table about theological you know, beliefs and leanings and things, but it was always like iron sharpening iron and it was always in good fun and good jest and we left still united as partners in Christ for the gospel. Then I graduated from Moody and I went home to my home church and for the next 10 to 12 years I did women's ministry right in my church and really we were all very united. And then I began blogging 11 years ago. And when I started blogging, no trouble. I was completely alone. I didn't know anyone out online. Not one person did I know, a blogger, teacher, preacher, nobody famous, nothing. And so I just began doing that. And over time, I got to know other bloggers. And I would go to conferences, and I really loved the other Christian bloggers and teachers and authors and preachers. And so we began to lock arms together and do this mystery thing um, together. And we would share with each other our books and, and, um, and and I would share them with my followers out online. And so I was having a great time. And then about six or seven years ago, it started to get a little bit ugly. It started to get hard. I started to realize like, ooh, this person has different doctrines than I have. And I don't want to really lock arms with them because I don't want my followers to follow that. And so I started unlocking arms. And I started to be like, oh, I can't do that. I can't lock with that person. I can't lock with that one. And in the midst of wrestling with who should I be with and who should I not, you know, connect with and, and all of that, I began talking with just a really small circle of my blogging friends about how I was wrestling with this. And 
that turned into, for me, a little bit of gossip and slander. And it was wrong and it was divisive. And I have repented of this. And I think if you've been with my ministry in the last five years while we've been reading through the Bible, you've probably seen a change in me in that area because I never uh, talk about that kind of stuff. And I just do not want to be divisive. I feel like the Lord taught me a lesson and I got disciplined in that sense because when I experienced division with one of my dearest, closest friends, and one of the pieces of that puzzle was this about who we wanted to follow and not, I realized how wrong it is and I I want to share that story with you because I want you to be aware that Satan puts that trap out there for us and I fell into that trap and I was wrong and I am sorry for that and I'm trying to do better and I do think that the Lord calls us to be discerning um, and so we still have to do that but I think for me I need to just talk to my mom or my sisters or somebody really close to me if I'm wrestling that out I don't need to go and um, and be you know, being divisive in that sense. So that brings us to chapter three, verse seven, where Paul says, so neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. He's like, they're nobodies. Okay. We're just a bunch of sinners saved by grace. And he says, but only God who gives the growth. You know, when you think of a farmer, you know, there's one who wa he waters and he plants the seed, but it's God who gives life. It is God who causes things to grow. And it's the same way with preachers and teachers and authors and conference speakers and all those things. They are just tools in the hands of God doing the work, but it is God who gives life. It is God who gives growth. It is God that we are all following. And so he says, he who plants and he who waters are one. We are to be one. We are on the same team. And so within our churches, within our communities, we need to be uniting across our uh, different dividing lines, even though those exist there, we need to love each other. We need to look different than the rest of the world. I especially see this on Twitter, where um, we can get mean, the Christians, to our own people. We tear them apart, and then we look nothing like, um, we look just like the world. We look no different. And who wants to be a part of that when we are ripping each other apart? And so then that takes us to chapter four, verse one about who we really are. Who are those, you know, it's funny because when you see, don't be fooled by the stages and the lights and the microphones and the big audiences and all the followers and all of those things. Those people who are leading and teaching and preaching and writing are simply servants. Look at chapter four, verse one, Paul says, this is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. The mysteries of God are really just, it's the truths of God. They are to be faithful to preaching the truths. And what are they in the eyes of God? They are servants and they are stewards. You know, when I um, was in high school and college, I was a waitress. And so I would walk up to the tables and I would say, hi, my name is Courtney and I'll be your server today. When I walked up to that table, I knew that I was not the honored guest. I knew that I was not going to take a seat at the head of the table. No, I was there to make sure that the table of people there were well fed and well cared for. And that's how I see this ministry here at Women Living Well. I just want to say, hi, my name is Courtney and I'm here to serve you. And my only hope is that you will be well fed and well cared for in the family of God. That is what God has called leaders to. If you are a leader, that is what you are. You are just a servant among servants. We're all the same at the foot of the cross. He also says that they are stewards, those who are leaders. And um, back in uh, Bible times, a steward would have been someone who managed a home to make sure that the people of that home were properly cared for and fed. And so compared to the other people in the house, a steward would have just been a servant. But compared to the servants in that house, the steward would have been like the head servant. He would have been in charge of the servants as well. But again, still there to care for the other servants to make sure they are fed and well cared for. So they are just servants. They are just head servants. So here are some takeaways for us from 1 Corinthians chapters 1 through 4. Number one, watch out for those who are drawing really strong lines in the sand where they say we need to divide over certain doctrines, over certain biblical issues, over certain um, liberties in the family of God. I am not talking 
about the gospel. We don't bend on the gospel, on the fact that Jesus is God and the Trinity and that he died and rose again and things like that, we don't bend on. But when it comes to all the different denominational differences, we don't wanna draw strong lines in the sand. We need to unite with our brothers and sisters in Christ and love each other. And anyone who's telling us to be strong like that and divide, is not following 1 Corinthians 4, uh, chapters 1 through 4. They are not following the word of God. Secondly, we need to beware. We need to not put preachers and teachers and even dead theologians and authors up on pedestals. They are just humans. They are imperfect. They are sinners. And they are not to take the place of God and his word. And he calls us to be united, to be knit together, to be woven together. And finally, number three, don't start clicks around who you follow or around who you don't follow. Don't start all of that. You know, sometimes we feel this need to out people and I get it because that's what I was saying. I fell into six to seven years ago. I really got in there, but I learned the really hard way that I became a divisive person and that is not okay because we are to love God and we are to love others and I am called to speak truth. And you know if you follow me that I am all about that. That's why I fell into that. But yet we have to speak truth and love. And we need to sometimes let things go and let God. God will take care of those who are teaching things that are not right. As a matter of fact, in chapter 4, we are told just that. Um, oh, wait. No, it's in chapter 3. Um, verse, let's see, like 13. It says that it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test what sort of work each one has done. One day in heaven, God will look at the works of each one of us. And he says the fire will show what sort. Like what sort was it? Was it true or was it false teaching? And it says in verse 14, if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. Though he himself will be saved, but only as through the fire. You see, one day, every preacher, teacher, author will be judged. They will face God for everything they've done. They'll be rewarded if they were faithful and they were careful to, to give sound doctrine. And they will suffer loss if they did not. And they will. It says they will be saved, but only as through the fire. So these are our sisters and brothers in Christ. But they won't have the rewards that they would have had if they would have been faithful to the mysteries of God and to teaching God's word. So we want to be aware that God is calling us today to love each other, to unite. In our local communities, he wants our denominations as those who are um, gospel following believers. He wants us to be united and to love each other and out online. That is what God is calling us to be. He said that they will know that we are Christians by our love. We need to be different than the rest of the world and to love each other and to be united. Keep walking with the King.